most everyone will tell you that confidence is the key to attracting a good partner in your life. And yet, when you think about it, the vast majority of men and women are suffering from insecurities. They're wearing a mask. They're hiding their deep pain. In fact, I would say that the number one emotional health issue is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. The reality is, is many human beings are suffering on the inside to some degree. And again, confidence is being bombarded. The idea of being confidence is being bombarded onto people as if this is going to be the key to relationship success. And yes, it is true. When we feel good about ourselves, we are more likely to attract someone who hope hopefully also feels good about themselves. And yet men and women are suffering. So what are the key areas people are suffering? Well, that's what I want to lean into today. Where are the men and women suffering in this way? Because if you think about it, I believe here in the United States, roughly about 120 million of our population is single. I may repeat that roughly 120 million of our population over 18 years are single. And I would say less than half of those people are actively in the dating marketplace. I mean, my, what I mean to say is putting themselves out there so they can be seen by single eligible people. And the reason why they don't do it is for the insecurities I'm about to share today. Now, let me just say this. While the title is related to male insecurities, you can literally transpose these into female insecurities as well. And I invite you to look inward to say, am I experiencing any of these insecurities as well? Because maybe doing a deep dive on your own emotional health will help you attract a partner who's also doing the same work. All right, so I want to lean into this conversation right now. I know many of you say I drag this out. Well, let's just dive into this. Okay, now I want to different. Well, I'm going to do a, a rabbit hole real quickly. I want to differentiate between the 20 and 30 year olds versus those that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And while this applies to all men and women alike, I will say there are some slight differences. And I'll deviate from this conversation a little bit to express those differences. And I think partly the reason why I'm doing this is, folks, I have a 27 year old son. Okay, just turned 27. And not to suggest he's experiencing this, and yet I know many people in this age bracket of 20 and 30 year olds experience this as well as men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So the number one, oh, and by the way, this is in no order, okay? I'm just sharing my number one um, male insecurity centers around body image, body image. Ladies, you know you've been bombarded with the objectification for women towards body image when we think of magazines like Vogue and Cosmo and certainly now Instagram and the whole shift in body image because of, of the bombardment of photographs on Instagram as well for you women. We men experience body image issues as well. Now, certainly, I've, I've listed things like hair. Well, for those men in their 40s, 50s, or 60s that are balding, they feel a sense of insecurity compared to those men who aren't in that same position. And while this isn't true for those men in their 20s and 30s, certainly hair can be one of those body image issues. Waist, waist size, gut size. You know, a lot of coaches are directing their attention to young men focusing on attraction and telling them the importance is to physically work out and get shape so you can attract a great partner. And yet, as we age, it's much harder to do that type of work and not to suggest that it can't be done. But at the same time, a lot of men in this over 40, 50, 60 category are feeling a sense of insecurity by their waist. Now, here's the thing. We can do something about it. And yet it's hard when we're also suffering on the inside and food sadly is a way to comfort ourselves. And we see here in the United States, an obesity problem to just a, as an example. Now I said, hair, waist, um, you know, their body, that sort of thing, their teeth, 
Okay, <laughs> teeth is can be an insecurity. I know when I was watching the movie Austin Powers, uh, and they talked about how English people have poor teeth, and um, here in the United States that uh, it was good to in that movie to go get dental implants or whatnot. But certainly, teeth can create some fear around whether or not we're going to attract in a partner. And then the most important one of all centers around our height, our height, is particularly for men. As I said earlier, women have body issues as well. And I'm glad to see some of the comments are saying, bald men are sexy. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But coming back to height, you know, the, the, the one issue I noticed, well, when I began in began dating after my divorce is how many women were particular about wanting men over six foot tall. Now I happen to be lucky. I was blessed by my mommy and daddy to give me height of six, two and a full head of hair. And yes, my hair isn't graying. Take a look. I just want you to know there is no gray hair there. I am lucky to be a baby boomer who doesn't have gray hair yet. Okay. I'm blessed that way, but coming back to height, I know so many women are particular to have men over six feet tall, and yet less than 15% of the male population is over six feet tall. The average height of a man is not five, nine, five, nine and a half. And so a lot of men feel an insecurity as to whether or not they're going to measure up to your desires. And just remember, you have your own insecurities of how men objectify women and only desire, whether it's the thin woman, the Kardashian woman, whatever it is, we can all feel a sense of insecurity when it comes to our physical appearance, which includes height as well. Okay, the second Fear of rejection or fear of abandonment. Now, let me dive into the fear of rejection. And I, I can speak from personal experience here. I know in the, dating, in, in the dating marketplace, it is very scary because men are expected to be the leaders of the process and to initiate the dating process. In fact, it's one of the reasons why apps like Bumble was created. So it takes that initial uh conversation out of the male's hands and put it in the woman's hands. Well, for men, we can feel a sense of fear of rejection. Someone once told me a man will ask a hundred women out hoping one says yes. I just want you to realize this. This is an advantage women have because men are the ones who do the asking. And at the same time, it can create a sense of fear within us. I remember shortly after my divorce, it was um, St. Patrick's Day. I was at a pub with some friends and I was sitting across, uh, I was sitting at a table, high top table, and I saw a group of women like two tables down. There was one that just caught my eye and I'm looking at her, she's looking at me, I'm looking at her, she's looking at me, I'm looking at her, she's looking at me. It took me over an hour to get the courage to walk up and say hello. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, you would think it would just be easy to walk up to a total stranger and say hi. And yet, believe it or not, it scared the hell out of me to do that, even though she was giving me green lights all the way. And while it didn't work out because there was a big age gap difference between us, I didn't realize that at the time. Um, you know, I was feeling a sense of fear. And I, I said earlier, abandonment. Well, this plays a huge role for those of us, particularly in midlife, to actually lean into the emotional aspects of a relationship. You know, it's important to recognize that we all have some sort of childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that cause us to have negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our lives. And one of them includes the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection. This is one of the reasons why I highly recommend everybody reading the book, the Hoffman process, the Hoffman process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas to overcome some of those fears centered around rejection, centered around um, abandonment. It's one of the reasons why, folks, I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Uh, by the way, I want you to check out the link below to get a copy of my book or all the books I recommend. Why well, I'm bringing this up right now I said earlier that the feeling of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not likable. Well, self-love is like a vaccination to emotional chaos. It's like giving yourself a booster shot. 
And whether you're a man or a woman, we all need some of that self-love, which represents self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance. See, because believe it or not, yes, men and women alike are suffering from insecurities. And yes, I know you can watch content out there by the alpha male and they're telling all the men that you need to be financially successful and you need to be confident. And yet there's a lot of young men, as well as men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, that feel a sense of insecurity. And for some, it's severe enough to paralyze them so they don't put themselves out in the dating marketplace. Because as I said earlier, probably half of the population doesn't put themselves out there, whether you're a man or a woman. Okay, I said fear of rejection, fear of abandonment was number two. Number three. Financial comparisons, financial comparisons, or financial status, if you will. How much he makes and where he lives. Yes, men are fearful or have insecurities of whether or not they even have the capacity to be a provider protector, let alone take care of themselves. This is true for younger men. And as, as men age, given that 75% of males over 45 years old are divorced, roughly, and that's anecdotal, you know, there's oftentimes alimony, child support playing a factor here, given the fact that also here in the United States, 80% of the population makes less than $100,000 a year. There isn't enough resources. So this is about financial resources. Do I have the capacity to attract that partner? Now we can all say, well, work hard, get more money. Yes, that's easy to say. And yet not necessarily easy to do, whether you're a man or woman. And financial comparisons represents how much the more attractive those celebrities, those athletes are compared to the average male. See, the problem is a lot of the rhetoric out there in the dating realm is centered on just such outliers and not the real people out there that just have regular jobs, making a regular kind of living, doing their best to not only survive, but thrive in, a, in, a, in some sense. And yet we can feel insecurity. I know personally, after I lost my high paying corporate job, I was reduced to feeling like I would never amount to anything compared to women from that financial perspective. Because for women, oftentimes it's represented by looks and for men, it's represented by their ability to um, give resources. And you know, many of you women will, will reject a guy who makes less money than you. You know, I'm a big believer. Let's say you make $90,000 a year and he makes $65,000 a year. Well, the combination of to that is 155,000. Two are better than one. And yet a lot of men feel like they can't measure up. And I know you'll all say, well, if I make more money, he'll be intimidated. Let me just say this. A man's penis doesn't shrivel up and he curls up into a ball because a woman does better than the than the man financially. Now, a lot of men might have insecurities about that and it might be contentious, but I think most men appreciate the idea that two is better than one. So ladies, why not indoctrinate that in, into your lexicon as well, that two is better than one. And yes, if you benefit by having a bit more, that's better for the both of us. Now, you might have experienced men who get jealous or whatnot. Yes, that's an insecurity, but they're not intimidated by it. It's because the two of you have not built enough trust in this area of financial resources and economic agreement, as I talk about in my private coaching. By the way, you can see a link right here, jonathanasley.com forward slash coaching. One of my areas of expertise is helping you determine who's really most compatible with you and then asking the the questions to determine uh, compatibility. I teach something called radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. Also, I have another part in the program called gauge his emotional maturity because emotional maturity is an important factor in relationship success. I know many of you in, have been indoctrinated in the belief that chemistry equals relationship success. And while chemistry is an important aspect of attraction, what typically, um, tips the scales for emotion or for a successful relationship is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. 
And if you need some support with that, again, check out the link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Number four, believe it or not, sexual performance and penis size. There, I said it out loud, penis size. Yes, a lot of men can feel a bit insecure as to whether or not they'll actually satisfy you in the bedroom. And for those of us in midlife, there's an equally equally important problem, and that is maintaining an erection. What's interesting, I'm noticing the same problem with younger men. It probably has to do with diet, and most importantly, has to do with the stress we are all experiencing right now. You know, it used to be the most, the the biggest stress issue was just pure survival. Now we have a multitude of stress issues that cause us to have weak performance in the bedroom. And yet many men feel a sense of insecurity. And I know you women feel the same insecurity. Will you get wet enough? Are you even, does your even, do you even have a libido anymore? I know for many women and men, there's anxiety over sexual performance and their, and their genitals. Well, guess what? Men experience this as well. And so I think it's important that we start with a sense of compassion. You know, I've just laid out four male insecurities. I'm here to invite more compassion and understanding of the opposite sex instead of this divide we have between the sexes. This, this, this fight we have, this rejection, this bitterness, this jadedness, it's time to shift the narrative because here's the reality, and I'm going to share the fifth one in just a moment. Most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. Most men are just like you. They're wounded. They're hurt. They're struggling. And there's no roadmap. There's no role model. There are very few role models giving a roadmap to relationship success. It's one of the reasons why I've invited Marie on the channel. There's a picture of her right now, right there. I've invited her just to be a little sense of a role model that it is possible at midlife to attract a really good partner. It is possible. And it has nothing to look, do with looks or financial status. It has to do with how much you care about yourself from the inside out. And lastly, and again, this was in no order. Oh, I want to, by the way, I've got to deviate for a second. Going back to financial status, financial resources, a lot of this is predicated on our father stuff. Remember I said earlier, childhood wounds and traumas? This definitely relates to how our father represented that provider protector in our household, and that can cause us to feel tremendous amount of insecurity. That's our father issue. What I'm about to share now is our mother issue. And that is not meeting your expectations. That's the fifth one, not meeting your expectations. See, this relates to our mom issue. You know, our mother was our our first, hopefully we had a mother, you know, that nurtured us in childhood. Not everybody gets the benefit of that for one reason or another. And yet we have this desire to make mommy happy to be a hero in your life. And in many cases, we could be suffering on the inside because we have a mother wound. And it causes some men to be over givers, to be over people, people pleasers. Women do the same typically when they have a father issue. And we over giver, or maybe the person had such a uh, disappointing experience with their mother and it caused them to be under givers. See, we all have issues with our mothers and our fathers or our primary caregivers that were male and female. You know, it's interesting. I once worked with a client who said, by the way, she's in a happy relationship right now. She said, the the man said um, on their first date, she was asking, where did you grow up? And he was in another country. And she said, "What? how was your relationship with your mom? And he said, my mother was a despicable human being. And when I heard that, I felt so sad for this person to have that kind of experience associated with his mother. So just remember, we have wounds inside of us that require some effort to heal. And so first and foremost, I invite you all to do individual healing and at the same time recognize that men have insecurities as well, whether it's our body, whether it's our fear of rejection and abandonment whether it's our financial resources. 
whether it is our sexual performance and penis size, and lastly, our ability to make you happy. We are all experiencing this on some level. So what's the antidote to all of this? The antidote is compassion. The antidote is love. Do you know love is a powerful force? And what I mean to say is loving yourself and loving others, loving myself and loving others, loving myself and loving others is the antidote to suffering on the inside. And just remember, most men are good guys. They're just bad at dating. So I hope you found value in what I've shared today about the five male insecurities since this is my live stream and it's time for Q&A.